Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to a, another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are talking about everyone's favorite energy producing organelle. No, not, not you production team. You, you guys literally suck the energy from me and how certain dietary habits may turn these cellular power plants into longevity liabilities waiting to implode. Okay, well, that, that may have been just a tad bit dramatic, but also maybe not enough. We are breaking down some new animal research on our mission critical for biological business, mitochondria, and specifically how dietary carbohydrates, AKA sugar, may impact their health, efficiency, and overall function. So in the next 13 minutes and 42 seconds, we're gonna cover what your mitochondria are, why they're essential, the new research highlighting how modern day eating habits may be stressing them out, and some mitochondria friendly healthy habits to implement moving forward. And you know what? I, I don't know what it is, but it seems like there's, there's some good energy in the room, in the air today. I can just feel it. Hmm. Could it be coming from within? Your mitochondria. Mitochondria are the organelles within our cells that generate most of the chemical energy needed to carry out biochemical reactions. And since we, me and you, are made up of cells, essentially these little guys power our life. The chemical energy produced in our mitochondria is known as adenosine triphosphate or ATP, which is the energy currency we trade to sustain biological function. Not to be confused with Dogecoin, which is the currency production team trades to validate their lack of reality. And when it comes down to density around our body, different cells happen to have different amounts of mitochondria based on their energy needs. For example, muscle and liver cells have a lot, along with other key organ systems while adipose or fat tissue have very few. But as we'll see in a minute, that ain't always the case. And here's why keeping these cellular power plants healthy happens to be a good idea. Mitochondrial dysfunction has been identified as one of the top longevity liabilities on the market, being highlighted as not only one of the underlying mechanisms of aging, but chronic inflammation and metabolic disease across the board with strong associations to cardiovascular problems, neurodegeneration, and cancer. Damaging these cellular power plants not only affects the aforementioned ATP energy production, but also metabolite conversion and the production of cellular reactive oxygen species, or ROS, making them more prevalent. Yeah, the opposite of a few of my favorite things. You guys know the song, right? We'll keep going. And research has indicated that one of the things that has the strongest association with stressing these little guys out is overnutrition. What a perfect segue to the study. Ready for a fun fact? The average American eats roughly 22 teaspoons of added sugar a day, more than three times the recommended amount for women and more than two times the recommended amount for men. Yummy. Yummy. And although this overconsumption is known to contribute to type two diabetes and other disorders, the exact ways on how eating too much sugar sets the stage for metabolic diseases at a cellular level has been less than clear. So researchers from Van Andel Research Institute embarked to see if they can identify the early cellular changes that links dietary carbohydrates to mitochondrial function. And to do this, they constructed a clever mouse model to gauge the impact of excess cellular glucose influx on mitochondrial health, efficiency, and function. This model consisted of two groups of mice. Knockout mice being bred missing a key protein that controls glucose transport in the cell, driving high glucose influx, and controls being normal wild type mice. This made the knockout mice prone to high intracellular glucose levels and allowed researchers to see how excess cellular glucose influx impacted brown adipose tissue or a specific type of fat tissue. And they focused on brown adipose tissue or BAT tissue 
for two main reasons. First, brown adipose sites are dense with mitochondria and their key thermogenic functions rely heavily on mitochondria integrity. Second, they could easily induce acute stress on this tissue to challenge their mitochondria capacity. What type of stress? Only one of the best types of good stress on the market, cold stress, which I know you remember the importance of from last week's video, right? So after an initial analysis of mitochondrial function, researchers presented this cold challenge to see how mitochondria will function when they need to upregulate heat generation through a process called non-shivering thermogenesis, one of the staples and key functions of brown adipose tissue. So what happened? So... Well, a few things. First, Researchers found that excess glucose intake into brown adipocytes led to fewer polyunsaturated fatty acids in the membranes of the mitochondria, which essentially drives the mitochondria to be less efficient. So why exactly do polyunsaturated fatty acids matter? Well, because they are vital players in supporting mitochondrial function and mediating a host of many other biological processes such as inflammation, blood pressure, and cellular communication. Oh, that's why. Here's where it gets interesting. Researchers found that in the knockout mice, excess glucose was synthesized into a different form of fatty acids that isn't as efficient or flexible as polyunsaturated fatty acids, unbalancing the lipid composition of the membrane and putting stress on the mitochondria directly affecting their integrity and functionality and resulting in reduced heat generation. I mean, come on, no one, and I mean no one production team attacks the integrity of our mitochondria without reason. Oh, what, what, what was that? There, there, is, there is reason? How embarrassing. With the introduction of the cold stress challenge, the mitochondria of these knockout mice were dramatically swollen and had broken crista, showing a significant loss of structural integrity. However, this phenotype was reversible, displaying a timely recovery a few hours after the stress was removed. Hmm, what else? Researchers also found impaired metabolite efficiency in the knockout mice, observing lower electron transport chain activity for two key metabolites for energy production, pyruvate and glycerol 3-phosphate suggesting that the electron transport chain or vital ATP production process was not operating efficiently in the knockout mice. Kind of like a kink in the production line. Or production team. Interestingly, they also found that the observed lipid composition change may potentially drive more inflammation, increasing the production of those inflammatory reactive oxygen species. This, however, was not fully able to be teased out in this specific study. But all in all, they found that increased intracellular glucose availability directly influenced the function of mitochondria by reducing the membrane's polyunsaturated fatty acid content. And under stress, this became detectable as deficiencies in electron transport chain function and structural integrity. But, I mean, videos are just better with a big, but, in them, right? Researchers took this one step further to see how change in diet altered the mitochondrial playing field. What type of diet, you ask? Well, the opposite of high carbs. They placed the animals on a ketogenic diet, and after keeping them there for five weeks, they found that there was no significant difference between the wild-type mice and the knockout-type mice's lipid content with and without the cold challenge suggesting that the damaged mitochondrial phenotype was essentially rescued from a ketogenic-like diet. You know, maybe we won't let the keto moms on Facebook know about this one. According to researchers, these findings illustrate a clear early connection between carbohydrate intake and mitochondrial function in mice, confirming mechanistically one detrimental aspect of a high sugar diet. So. What the hell does this all mean? And how can we keep our mitochondria healthy? First, we have to keep in mind that this was an imperfect study that tried to mimic a very real life scenario that 
a lot of people in this modern world face. So here are a few key call outs. First, mice are not humans. Even if a few humans are rats, mice are not humans. Second, most of us don't walk around with mutations in a key protein that regulates glucose transport, driving excess amounts into our cells. We get excess amounts into our cells by other means, overconsumption. However, the average person walking in the modern world overeats and overeats typically highly refined carbohydrates. So at the very least, this research gives us a little more info into what may be happening with our cellular power plants that are so, so, so critical for health and longevity. Does this mean sugar is evil? No, of course not. However, excess added sugar in the form of highly refined, highly processed, fiber lacking foods and drinks are probably problematic. And before any dysfunction is evident as a symptom, a constant sugar siege may be impairing our chemical power plants and thus impairing us, setting the stage for more dysfunction to come in the form of chronic disease. So unless there's a very specific reason, there is no need to cut out carbs. They're our body's preferred source of energy and pretty key for life. But making an effort to consume high quality carbohydrates in the form of real foods is more likely the big health deciding factor. And as for your mitochondria, some good ways to keep them strong and efficient include sweating it out at least a few times a week, intermittent fasting, which you can see all about in the how to fast playlist, cold exposure, such as ice baths and cold showers, heat stress, such as saunas, and of course, healthy eating. Real whole foods that are packed with nutrients and phytochemicals that support mitochondrial function. All of the aforementioned we cover in depth in a lot of other videos on this channel. I'll link them all below. I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise that we got a lot going on in us to keep us, us. So let's take this ever emerging knowledge and turn it into the currency of improved health, extended longevity, and no, not, not Dogecoin, not you guys, you guys have it. Why do you ruin every single sign off?